Bitcoin is possibly the wildest investment opportunity ever to have existed. With a 1 billion percent return in just 11 years, it still shows no sign whatsoever of slowing down. In this extensive year-long series, we will get entirely under the technical skin of Bitcoin so that you are fully in tune with its behavior and what to expect from now on. On May 22, 2010, now known as Bitcoin Pizza Day, Laszlo Hanyex agreed to pay 10,000 Bitcoins for two Papa John's pizzas. Since then, Bitcoin has increased in value by no less than 1 billion percent at most. Yes, you heard me. 1 billion. 10 million times your investment. Enough to put any 10-bagger chaser to shame. We are wired to understand the market based on its normal frameworks and movements. So when an extreme statistical outlier like Bitcoin pops up from nowhere, it quickly becomes too abstract to get our heads around. Let's begin this series by making a brave attempt at putting things into perspective so that we can get a better understanding of what we're in fact dealing with here. How incredible Bitcoin's run has been so far. Apple and Amazon are two of the strongest stocks ever to have existed. Since their 1980 and 1997 IPOs respectively, they have coincidentally and by the time of producing this, gone up by 270,000% each. That's 2,700 times your investment. Since Apple's launch, the US Nasdaq has gone up by 10,000%, and since that of Amazon, it's gone up by 730%. This means that Apple and Amazon have outperformed the Nasdaq index by 2,636,900% respectively. Or put differently, your profits would have been 26 and 370 times greater if you were to have invested in either of the two rather than in a Nasdaq index fund. These are returns many people could only dream about. But however insane the price developments in Apple and Amazon are, to a great extent unprecedented on the stock market, they still amount to nothing more than 0.027% compared to that of Bitcoin. By the same token, if Bitcoin were to have generated $1 million in profits from a certain investment amount, Apple and Amazon would have generated 270 bucks with that same amount. Enough to buy yourself a vintage Game Boy. And by the same comparison, a US Nasdaq index fund since 1980 would have generated $10 in profits. To break it down, Bitcoin has returned an average profit of 558% per year for 11 years straight, or 17% a month over the same period of time. But what is most baffling and rather impossible to comprehend is how literally anybody in the world could have been a billionaire today from a trifling $100 investment just 11 years ago. And the freaky thing about this is how recent it really was. I for one can still give a pretty detailed account of my entire year in 2011. Now, there is one reason and one reason only why I begin this series by presenting this seemingly never-ending streak of numbers, and that is because I want to stress how utterly insane Bitcoin's price development has really been. And what's even more mind-boggling is how it shows no signs whatsoever of slowing down. What sets Bitcoin apart is not only its 1 billion percent price increase. What this increase tells us is that Bitcoin is either of two things. Either it's the biggest bubble the world has ever seen, or it is a new paradigm that will forever change our perception and application of money. I see you have your computer linked to the telephone line. Can you tell us how you did that? Yes, well, it's very simple, really. Tech and math savvy people who understand the underlying structure of Bitcoin tend to unanimously appreciate its features, strengths and potentials. And after six years of studying and researching Bitcoin myself, the only people I personally come across who actively dislike Bitcoin, yeah, who even hate it, are people who don't understand it. 
I'm talking people who've read critical mainstream articles written by surface-level journalists who don't know the first thing about Bitcoin themselves. This is a prime case of the blind leading the blind. Now, I'm not saying Bitcoin is here to change the world, for it might not. Anything that grows as extensively as Bitcoin has will be subject to a long series of problems, public resistance and adversities. And in a sense, Bitcoin today much resembles that of IT in 1999. People talked about how it would change the world, yet few people actually used it. For Bitcoin to really make it in the long run, it will need to gain more public appeal and practical application. Few people could foresee the possibilities of tech and the internet in the late 90s. Life was just too different in those times and we had no points of references whatsoever of how the internet could change our lives for the better. And I think the same principle and criticism now applies to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Its full range of applications are beyond our current points of references. This makes it difficult to fully understand how right in time this groundbreaking invention might really be. That is, until we're actually there and they cost 3 million bucks each. Then people, as in present haters and skeptics, will think Bitcoin is obvious and scold the people of 10 or 20 years back for being narrow-minded and a bit stupid. No one really knows what lies ahead. Regardless of what, there will certainly be both practical issues as well as political obstacles. This uncertainty in turn is a premium that is added on to the Bitcoin price. Now, as no one knows where Bitcoin will ultimately end up, all I'm saying is that when two different camps oppose each other, with one camp being the loud and angry one consisting of collective ignorance and I don't want to listen to your arguments type of people, and the other one being the silent one consisting of some of the most creatively brilliant minds in the world today, I sure know which camp I will listen to myself. The very same camp that turned IT into the biggest paradigm shift in modern history. All bubbles burst eventually. It's in their very nature. Something gets inflated way beyond its true value upon which the price collapses. After that, one of two things can occur. Either the underlying equity or asset begins anew another market cycle, often from a higher plateau, which too eventually ends in another bubble burst, and so on and so on. Stock indices are a prime example of this, as the fifth waves typically get people a bit too worked up on FOMO and greed. The other alternative is when the equity is proclaimed dead. We're talking inflated air, the South Sea bubble, tulips and so on. Things without or with very little intrinsic value whatsoever. Now, many critics firmly claim Bitcoin to belong to this category. It's got no intrinsic value, they say. And in a way they're right, for Bitcoin it's code. But then, by their very own argument, all present IT companies, Google, Facebook, you name it, should also be valued at zero. For what are they? What intrinsic values do they possess? They're also just code. Some will counter and say, yeah, but they make money from ads. Sure, now they do. But Facebook was valued at billions long before any marketing revenues. In fact, the expert skeptics upon Facebook's 2012 IPO loudly shouted that Facebook would flunk because there was no way in hell they'd make any money. For how could they? They were a simple website on which people interacted and wrote messages to each other. Well, let us then ask those critics how clever they feel today. My point is this, just because we don't understand now from our limited 2021 points of references how Bitcoin's areas of application may expand in the future, it doesn't mean it's worthless. For most brilliant inventions have had a tendency of being ahead of their time. If you were to have invented gasoline during the medievals, they probably used it to set you on fire. But invent it when the car is around and you can use it to drive anywhere you wanna go. <laughs> I know, that was a stupid fucking analogy. For how could they invent the car before they have invented a functioning engine? <clears throat> I'm stupid, I'm stupid. With this in mind, Bitcoin has gone through several bubbles already, but it hasn't died. 
Each time around, it has come back bigger and stronger and proved to every headless chicken skeptic what it's actually made of. No, Bitcoin's never died. It merely corrects. It rests and it keeps on going higher. And this on its own should raise the question whether Bitcoin is a bubble at all or if it in fact is something altogether new and revolutionizing that is here to stay. And regardless of what people may think about Bitcoin, anyone with more than two functioning brain cells should stop and reflect whether a billion percent move is really just a massive bubble or if there's in fact something truly intrinsic behind it, whether they can see it or not. This series will stretch all the way throughout 2021 and is a profound endeavor to fully and truly portray Bitcoin from a technical point of view. That is, its technical behavior, its technical characteristics, its technical history and its technical opportunities and dangers alike so that we can map up what likely lies ahead in a complete and fully understandable fashion. No stone will be left unturned. It is our aim that this series will be the go-to source for a holistic comprehension of Bitcoin and its technicals. And I personally believe this series will be one of the most profound and valuable productions of this entire channel throughout 2021. We will occasionally mix it up with some Ethereum as well, but mainly so in order to maximize our profits as Ethereum in fact has quite a remarkable relationship to Bitcoin that we will look closely into in order to exploit it to our fullest advantage. So welcome. This is the first out of many Bitcoin and Ethereum episodes to follow, a journey I have personally looked forward to a lot. That was all for now. Thank you and goodbye.